As I'm recording this video, Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals have happened, and I know some of you have bought your first HomePod, and others are thinking about getting one this holiday season. Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you what you need to know to get started. We'll cover setup, some key features, entertainment tips, some smart home ideas, automation tricks, and other uses that will help you get the most out of your HomePod. Let's start with what you're gonna need to get started. You're gonna need your HomePod and an iPhone or an iPad. Now, if you're an Android user, you can set up an Apple Home just using an iPad. Next, you're going to want to place the HomePod somewhere where it's going to give you the best sound. The HomePod Mini is a single speaker that's a down-firing speaker and uh, basically gives you 360 sound, where the full-size HomePod has five tweeters and a separate woofer. In. When you place the full-size HomePod down, it will calibrate itself to give you the best sound for the room. If you use one HomePod or a pair of them paired up to an Apple TV, you can get Dolby Atmos sound out of it. The setup is really easy. You power it up and you bring your device near it. And you'll see that it'll recognize that there's a HomePod there. Apple guides you through the whole process. During setup, take advantage of personalized responses. This will recognize your voice when you make a request. And when it does recognize your voice, you can access your information. You can answer a call and it knows your phone's ringing. Or you want to send a message to somebody, it knows um, who that contact is. To hear what's on your calendar, it's recognizing your voice to access that information. Now, once you have your HomePod set up, you want to go into the Home app and select that HomePod and take a look at the settings in here. To get the settings, do a long press on it, choose accessory settings. In here, you can choose your room, add it to the home view, include in your favorites. You're going to find suggested scenes and when you have it in a scene it'll actually show up there the scenes that it's in. Some of the other settings include the uh, Siri settings. You could do the touch and hold on top to activate Siri, have the light come on, sound, you pick your voice. Uh, you want to use language. Under personal requests you could pick which home pods you can make your personal request on. You got your Siri history if you want to delete everything Siri knows. Another great feature is Intercom. Intercom allows you to send messages between your different home pods. You can make announcements across all of them. It's nice that you could choose your settings based on the individual home pods and your personal settings so that you only get notifications when you're at home or if you're anywhere. Sound recognition will listen for smoke or CO alarms. You have the accessibility features where you could turn on voiceover to help if you have vision problems or touch accommodations for interacting. You also have automatically adjust Siri's voice so that Siri will adjust based on how loud you speak and the background noise. Next, let's talk about the Home app. The Home app is powerful and can do a lot more than some people realize. Yes, you can control your accessories in there, but creating scenes, automations, and all those other options, um, there's a lot to it. Now, what's great about the Home app is that it's the same across all Apple devices. So what you can do on your phone, you can easily do on a MacBook. Now let's talk about setting up devices. Most important thing is you wanna get compatible devices, which is a lot easier now with Matter. Before there were limited Apple Home devices, now Matter has opened up so many more options and has made an Apple Home a lot more affordable. Once you have a supported device, you hit the plus button in the right corner and then you add an accessory. With with Apple Home and Matter devices, there is a setup code that you have to scan. Once you scan that, it's gonna try to connect to that device. When it's connecting, it'll connect the device to the same Wi-Fi that your phone or iPad is on. After it's done connecting to the device, you're going to pick the room it's, uh, it goes in, you're gonna name it, for some devices, it'll give you some automation suggestions. So if you do add a light, you can have it so that it automatically adds it into the all lights out uh, when everybody leaves automation. A big thing to get the most out of your devices is to create rooms. Make sure your devices are in their proper room. When you do that, you can walk into a room and just ask to have the lights turned on. The HomePod will know to only turn on the lights that are in the same room. Now with some devices out there, 
you might need to set up everything within their app and then there might be an option to expose those devices to HomeKit so you can add them in and then part of the setup process is scanning the code within the home app some devices might pair up with a hub and then you just pair that hub within apple home and then anything you add to that hub within the device manufacturer's app will automatically be added into apple home there's all different ways that companies are doing it now when it comes to your devices within the home app if you click on the little icon for a light bulb for example that serves as the on and off button but if you click on the box that's going to bring up your intensity and your color options definitely go in there play around with your different color options you can take advantage of adaptive lighting with some of them you're going to find with other accessories that if you do click on that box it takes you right into settings in the home app is where you're going to create your different scenes for your devices to make a scene you set your devices how you want them hit the plus sign add scene and then you'll give it a name you'll add the accessories you want to control it doesn't have to be every light it could be just certain items in the room the scene can be made up from devices across all rooms when you select your devices it'll save them at their current level if you want to make any kind of change you can click on the accessory make a change to it and then you can change colors do whatever you want when you select the new scene it brings everything up and then you could go into automations and trigger those scenes and trigger individual devices before we continue if you're enjoying this video or find it helpful please consider giving it a like and subscribing to check out the next one also at the end of this video i do have a 35 home pod tip video so you definitely want to check that out and i'll put a link to that in the description now let's talk about some of the key features of the home pod one it's that siri integration i know there's a lot of folks that don't like siri and i don't think for requesting information and stuff uh, siri is the best option but when it comes to executing commands and executing actions within different apple apps it's great at doing that. That's another key feature that you get with the HomePods is that integration across all different Apple apps. So you can put something into your calendar. You can create a new note. You can uh, make a reminder. You can send messages from the HomePod using your messaging app. Music and sound quality is another big thing about the HomePods, especially the full-size one. Having those different tweeters and calibrating to the room, you get nice full sound out of this. And for a little speaker this sounds nice and clean next is using your home pod as your hub for your smart devices so everything can be controlled locally requests you make are handled locally on the home pod not everything has to go to the cloud it can control things locally so that you can still control your lights if you don't have an internet connection your lights and smart plugs and different devices shouldn't have to talk to the cloud just to be turned on. HomePods are also great for setting timers, alarms, and helping you fall asleep using the sleep sounds. Now let's talk about some entertainment uses. A big thing about the HomePods is the sound quality. The full-size HomePod sounds nice. It has very immersive sound to it, especially if you pair up two of them. You could take advantage of spatial audio and the way it calibrates to the room to bounce sound around to make it sound like it's coming from around you. I get a lot of use out of my home pods because i have them paired up to an apple tv with the home pods you could take advantage of the home theater experience by pairing one home pod or a pair of them to an apple tv with the home pod minis these will sound better than a lot of tvs out there with the full-size home pod i actually used one of these for two or three years as basically a, the sound bar for my tv in here now i have a stereo pair that fills the room nicely another entertainment use is just asking for some music yeah Yes, you can ask for playlists or an artist, a song, but it's kind of cool to uh, ask for a genre or a mood. You know, you want some relaxing music or some party music, meditation music, you know, you will get something that fits. Here's all the streaming services you can connect to the HomePod. A recent addition is YouTube Music. With these services, you'll need to go into their app and connect it to the HomePod. Once you do, if you go under Home Settings, select your account, 
account, you'll see the connected services. Next is that multi-room audio. You can have music playing across all your different HomePods. You can start music on one HomePod and move it to another HomePod or add another room or HomePod into what's playing. A great feature for listening to stuff is handoff. I love that I can start playing an audio book off of Audible and just bring my phone to the HomePod and it'll transfer it over. I can uh, start a YouTube video and transfer the sound over. Basically, if you have an audio service that isn't supported by the HomePod, you take advantage of handoff, pass it over, and then when you want to move it back to your phone, bring your phone back to the HomePod, transfer it over. Now let's talk about the smart home and the HomePod. The HomePods are meant to be your smart home hub. With a HomePod, you can start adding devices into your Apple Home. I think one of the most important things about the smart home that people need to learn about is automating. There are so many different automation options. You know, using voice to turn things on and buttons and sensors are cool. But I think the real power of using these and having a smart home is just having things happen for you. That leads me into automations. Let's talk about some of the basics of automations and some of the different triggers and actions that you can take advantage of. One of the things I like a lot about Apple Home over an Echo and Amazon Home is the different trigger options. Some of your options include using time of day so that you can pick specific times for things to happen or you can pick something like sunset. In my house, I have the living room curtains closed two hours before sunset so that the light doesn't come blinding in through the window. Another trigger option is when a sensor detects something. So if you have a door sensor, a motion sensor, a temperature sensor, you can use those different sensors to trigger a scene or a device. When it comes to automations and sensors, you can take advantage of the temperature sensor in the new HomePods and in the uh, HomePod mini. So if the room gets too hot, it automatically turns a fan on or too cold, the heater turns on. You can also automate your home pods. You could do it based on a sensor or time of day or any of the other options. You would select your home pod, hit next, and when you do, you have your media controls. You click on the audio and you can play audio, pause, resume audio, or just have it adjust the volume for you. That's good to do that so that the volume is consistent. Uh, you can choose audio from uh, your music. I could go in and pick a radio station, for example click on that. Now it's set up and ready to go. I could save that. I can also pick how long I want that to play. So if I only want music to start in the morning and automatically stop, I can also add in other devices and scenes by hitting the back button, selecting them, and then continuing on to save the automation. One of my favorite automation options that Amazon and Google don't have is being able to have an accessory control other devices and scenes. For example, in my kitchen, I have an automation so that when I turn on one light switch, it tells another light switch to turn on. And then I have a second automation that when I turn off one switch, it tells the other switch to turn off. Now this opens up all different options. You can pair switches and plugs and bulbs. So you have an automation. So when a bulb comes on, it automatically turns on a smart plug at the same time. Next big thing in automations that what Amazon wasn't good at and didn't have is being able to trigger automations based on people arriving or leaving. You can have an automation when the last person leaves the house, it shuts all the lights off. Or you can have automation that as soon as you arrive, it turns on lights for you. Now what's cool about these automations is you can have them trigger when you arrive or leave the house. Or you can have an automation trigger when the last person leaves the house. That's a great option. So when I leave the house, it doesn't turn off the lights. But if my wife leaves the house too, it then triggers the automation to turn off. A big thing with Apple Home automations is that it's really about automating your smart devices. It's not like Amazon where you can have it tell you the tip of the day and a weather forecast and just a list of all different things. It really is about triggering your devices. Now when you're creating automations, you pick whatever you want to trigger it and then you pick what devices you want to trigger. You can trigger devices across multiple rooms rooms, and you can also trigger scenes. What I find is I typically write scenes and then have an automation that triggers them. What's great about that is that I can always go into the scene and tweak it
it and not have to mess with the automation. There's a lot of options within the home app and automating that people don't realize are there. Another automation setting that I like is for cameras. You can go into a camera setting and you can choose the recording options. You can have it stream and record. You can have it just stream so you can only check in on the camera. You can have it uh, do nothing and not stream or record. You can also just have it use the camera for motion detection. Now the way I have it set up is when the last person in my house leaves, it turns the camera to stream and recording mode. But when the first person comes home, it switches the camera just to streaming mode. I don't want my cameras recording whenever I'm in the house. I just want them recording when I'm gone. Let's talk about some other features and pro tips that you can use. Now a big tip for smart devices when you're setting them up. Think about what the non-tech person in your house would call it. For example, in my bedroom, my wife's light next to the bed is my light. So she can always say, turn on my light. The light next to my bed is Craig's light. Personally, I don't care what they're called. I'll remember the different things. It's more important my wife knows what these things are called because no matter how, how cool the smart home is to me, it, it's no fun when my wife's angry at it. I do whatever I can to set it up so it's as easy as possible for my wife. I don't need her angry at the smart home. Some voice command tips. Try some different things. Since the HomePod works across all the Apple ecosystem, you can access many apps. You can ask what's on your calendar today. You can ask to write a note or remind you to do something. You can ask what the weather is. You can set a timer. One of the things I like about timers is you don't have to set it for a certain amount of time. You can set it to go off at a time of day. So you just say set a timer for 2 p.m. And you could do the same thing with alarms in reverse. You can say set an alarm for 90 minutes from now. Another big tip that I like is using Apple's Reminders app for things like shopping lists. And you can share those reminders, those lists with other people. Like my wife and I share a shopping list, a Costco list, and a Target list. Now, if anybody adds anything to it, the other sees it. When I'm in the kitchen, I see we're out of something. I just ask Siri to add whatever to my Costco list or to my shopping list or my Target list. It's, it's so convenient. Right when I'm thinking about it, I can add it. I use reminders throughout the day. You know, remind me to take the laundry out in two hours. Remind me to do something when I get home. And then when I pull in the driveway and connect to my network, I get that reminder. Now, another tip and use that a lot of people don't talk about is using your HomePods for hands-free calls. If a call comes in on your phone, just ask your HomePod to answer it. If you wanna make a call, you just say, call whoever the contact is. It'll recognize your voice access your contacts and make the call from your phone. A couple other quick tips if you want to turn down uh, your HomePod, you got the buttons on top, but you can ask for volume to be at a certain level. You can also ask Siri to speak louder or softer. One of my favorite tips, because I don't want to always use voice, especially with all these different Apple devices, is to just do a long press on top and then make your request. Now, what are some of your favorite HomePod tips? Let us know in the comment section. Now, if you are looking for more HomePod tips, I got the video for you right here. There's 35 HomePod tips. That'll keep you busy for a while. And if you've made it this far in the video, please consider subscribing and check out the next one and give this video a like. It helps out the channel a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye.